Hello friends, I'm Daisy Victoria and today we're going to be getting ready for a photo shoot in my super cool and weird medieval eyes dress. If you've been following along with my previous videos, you may already know that this dress was inspired by a 14th century manuscript which features the Holy Grail quest. I actually designed and printed a fabric to mimic the allegorical dress seen in one part of the story which is covered in eyes. I also decided to make this fabric available to everyone else. So if you would like to make your own eye-catching dress, I will post the link to the fabric in the description. The first layer of my ensemble is actually an underdress. This one is made of white linen, which is very comfortable, and its purpose is really to protect your dress from the oils and sweats of your skin. So you would have to launder your underdress much more frequently than your actual dresses. This underdress is made with a rectangular period construction, and I have a video showing how I made it, as well as a PDF tutorial to help you plot out and create your own. And I will link those below. Next, I'm going to put on my dress. I made my dress lace in the front and I'm using finger loop cord. I do have tutorials on how to create the finger loop cord as well as the eyelet holes by hand so I'll link those too. You know we're actually getting a lot of resources here and that will continue so I'm really happy about that. I'm using a plastic yarn needle to lace this dress up. That makes it a lot easier than trying to actually like force it through each hole by hand, that would be... Well, I've tried that before, and I suggest that you just get a plastic yarn needle. If your needle comes off, that's no big deal, just put it back. Once I have the lacing through all the holes, I like to just kind of tighten it up and make sure it looks good. And then I just tie it off at the top and stick any excess inside my dress. Like so. Make sure the underdress is tucked in. Sometimes I end up getting some assistance to make sure the back is tucked in. You can also kind of lift your skirt and pull the underdress skirt down, give it a little tug and that helps it to kind of go below the neckline a little bit better. Next, I have sleeves. In period clothing, sometimes they did pin on separate sleeves, while at other times there was a whole underdress attached to those sleeves. Because I live in the South, I decided to make separate undersleeves to pin onto the sleeves of my dress. And finally, we're going to finish doing the hair to complete the look. In the manuscript, a lot of the women are wearing their hair with braids sort of up like this, which is kind of an Italian style for the period, so that's what I'm going to do. I've already braided my hair into Dutch braids, which means they start up here and come down. That is really nice because it gives me braid up here to kind of anchor as I do this. Now you can do this by pinning your hair up with bobby pins. I am actually going to do a hair taping method using a bit of ribbon. To do this, you need your yarn plastic needle so you can basically sew your hair to your head. Now my braids are not the neatest ever as you may notice. That is because I have some damage in my hair, but it's okay because when you tape your braids up on top of your head like this, I find that it's not really noticeable if you do it with care. Now I am doing this in front of a 
camera screen instead of a real mirror. So I will probably need to check it in the mirror after I do it and make sure that it looks okay. So what we're going to do is take each braid and kind of go like this, just stick it up there. <laughs> up around, um, I like to put it in the front of that Dutch braid, except I guess it kind of crosses when it gets to the crown of my head. And you're just going to sew it on, so I'm going to show you. I like to get it mostly stuck on and then do the other side so I can kind of finish the very visible top part with both braids up together. When you sew the braids onto your head, you're basically just catching the braid and also the portion of the braid that is, you know, French or Dutch braided to your head. Now I'm at the front. <laughs> so here you want to make sure that you cross your braids over in a nice way. It's okay if one side of your ribbon is longer than the other. That happens to me like all the time. So you're just gonna finish sewing them. Then I just tie these ends of the ribbon and tuck them inside. At this point, if you need to, you can use some bobby pins to kind of secure anything that's loose up there. I'm actually going to do that in the bathroom and come back. When my hair was longer and less damaged, I did not need to do that. So just keep in mind, if you have some challenges with your hair, it's totally possible to put in a few bobby pins and kind of work them out. I went ahead and went to the big bathroom mirror I have in the next room and I bobby pinned all my messiness down and now I am ready. I have my hair taped up in braids. <laughs>